In this video, I'm going to show everyone in scripture that many people, including me, have experienced what's known as the Mandela effect when it comes to who the Antichrist is. Is he even in the Bible? The one who at the end, in the end times during the tribulation, will deceive the whole world and make everyone take the mark of the beast and will form this pack uh, treaty with Israel only to betray Israel halfway through the, the seven year tribulation and all this evil stuff that the Antichrist will do. Is that even in the Bible? Well, we're going to take a look. We're going to find out. This is really fascinating stuff. I was really shocked when I started to do this because I have these preconceived notions of what I've always been taught, what I've always thought I read in the Bible. And so here we have, we're going to take a look at some scripture. But first, the Mandela effect. What is that? That's this, this weird phenomenon that you probably have heard of that where you thought you could swear you remember something one way only to find out that's not really the case. And I'm going to show you a few examples before we get into scripture. And Jif, is it is the peanut butter Jiffy or Jif? Okay, and uh, let's go on another one here. Yeah, how, which one is the correct Looney Tunes, right? Is it the one on the left or one on the right? And let's uh, move on to um, a few others. Okay, the baloney, Oscar Mayer. Which one's the correct spelling? Apparently, it's the one on the right. All right, here's a good one. Cheez Its. I get those for the kids, right? I don't, I can't even tell you, if, I can't even remember, is it, I, we say Cheez-Its, but I'm not sure if it's spelled Cheez-Its or cheez it. couldn't tell you which one's right. Oh, here's one I like, Star Wars, right, grew up with Star Wars, right, so which one is correct C-3PO, the one all gold or one that has one leg below the knee that's silver? Well, I don't, I, I, that one I know, I didn't have a Mandela effect on that one, I've known that well, it's the silver leg, yep. Oh, here's a, here's a famous Mandela Effect one. Everyone repeats this line. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, apparently it's not life is like a box of chocolates. The original line apparently was life was like a box of chocolates. I don't remember that. That's strange. All righty. For those who like classic Disney anything, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This is the movie that made the Walt Disney Company... Uh, and Walt Disney himself famous for the first full-length cartoon movie that proved basically that adults would even go to this and get caught up in the characters. Very interesting study on the gamble Walt Disney took to actually make this movie. Uh, Snow White and Mirror Mirror on the Wall, who's the fairest of them all? Everyone knows that line, right? Well, apparently it's Magic Mirror on the Wall, who's the fairest of them all? Who would have who guessed? We all heard Mirror Mirror repeated over the years. All right, one last one. Of course, back to Star Wars. Luke, I am your father. Famous line from Empire Strikes Back. Apparently, though that everyone remembers it this way, it's actually, no, I am your father. Not Luke, I am your father. How interesting. Okay, enough of those examples. Let's jump over to Revelation 13, where we're going to look at what it tells us about the Antichrist. Or does it tell us anything about the Antichrist? Okay, here we are, Revelation 13, King James Bible, and we're going to read some out of here. Um, but before we get into it, let me just summarize so people know. Okay, in the end times, there is, in Revelation, in the book of Daniel, right, but we're going to focus on Revelation 13, is the dragon. And of course, the dragon is Satan. And the dragon empowers this one beast that comes out of the sea. And then there's a second beast called the beast of the earth that comes out of the earth. And the second beast and the first beast are both empowered by Satan. And it is the second beast, the beast of the air, that makes the whole world worship the first beast. All right? And as you're going to see as we go through scripture, there's no mention of the Antichrist as a name. A one person Antichrist with a capital A as a name is not even in here. You'll see it. Let's, let's go along and you look for it. And we're going to look at some other scriptures where the word Antichrist does show up in the Bible. Right? Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. I could do a whole thing on that, but like a lamb. But um, this is the beast of the earth. Verse 12. And he exercised this, all the power of the first beast. The first beast is the beast of the sea. All right. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, who de whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders 
so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Remember, we are taught. If you've been taught, I've been taught. I've heard many people say that the Antichrist, the big capital A Antichrist, not, not an Antichrist spirit, but the Antichrist is going to be given powers by Satan and he will do great wonders and miracles and signs and the whole world will be enamored with this person. But that's not what this says. It's talking about a beast. This is not a human being. Right. Uh, and so um, uh, verse 14 is where I was. Uh, I started I, 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 or let me begin and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. That, that would be the first beast. Right. This is the, the second beast we're talking about. So the second beast will do these, these things, these miracles in the sight of the first beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, they should make an image to the beast. The first beast, the beast of the sea, which had a wound by a sword and did live. And he, he being the second beast, beast of the earth. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Okay, that would be the first beast, right? And that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. All right. I know I'm going back and forth. It's very, which beast is not the second beast, the first beast, whatever. Forget the confusion. It's very simple. The second beast of the earth in making everyone he, he brings back to life empowered by satan the dragon he brings back to life this dead beast of the sea and then makes everyone worship that beast okay and he caused this all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads very famous verse here revelation 13 verse 16 right and 17 and 18, they're all incredibly famous. Everyone's heard of them. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. There's your 666. Where in here is the Antichrist I've always thought was there? Where is he mentioned? He's not mentioned at all. There's no Antichrist. There's no individual person. There's two beasts. And... The number of his name is the number of the beast. It's referring to the beast as, as, as his name, the name of the beast, right? In verse 17, look, you know, right here, the name of the beast or the number of his name. The number of whose name? Not the Antichrist, but the number of the beast. And here it says the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. It doesn't say it is a man. It says it's the number of a man. In other words, the number of the beast is the number of a man, 666. That is about as close as you can get to finding something about a man that could be the Antichrist, but I don't think so because it's not there. But the Antichrist is in the Bible. I, someone can t t tell me this. Okay, here we go. Let's, 2 Thessalonians 2. Then we're going to look after this. We're going to look at four instances, the only instances in the Bible where Antichrist is a word you will find. Okay? And, but here we have a verse uh, in 2 Thessalonians 2. King James Bible, verses 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Could that be the Antichrist? Sounds like it. It says in verse 4, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, this is a reference to the person that I've always heard is going to make this alliance uh, around the world, bring in peace. Everyone will love him. He'll do wonders and miracles things. He's called the Antichrist with a big A, like it's his name, a capital A. And of course, I don't think people will call him the Antichrist. I mean, that's what the Bible's calling him, but the Bible never does. That's my point. That's the Mandela effect. The Bible never refers to this Antichrist by name. Here's the only reference. And this person is not doing the same thing the beast is said to do. So there seems to be where he will defile the temple, call himself God, and really, what has this got to do with the end times in Daniel or Revelation 13? We're talking about dragon and the beast. Plural, beast, two beasts. So this 
And so my question is, if you, another question, very interesting question. If you believe that one of the beasts is actually a man and it is the Antichrist or that the Antichrist is a separate person that is, works in conjunction with the beast to rule a one world government over all the world and is enamoring everyone and is in control and everyone thinks this is a great leader and he brings peace and this person also does signs and wonders and miracles and then he makes a pact with Israel that he uh, betrays you know, halfway through the, the, the seven-year tribulation. If you believe that person is the Antichrist, or let me put it another way, if you believe the Antichrist is a person, is that person made in the image of God? So those are the two questions. Is there some kind of Mandela effect thing going on with the Antichrist in the Bible? Is anything I'm telling you surprising as it was to me when I studied it? Like, where is this Antichrist exactly? Is this it? What about Revelation 13? What about in the book of Daniel? What about anywhere else? Where are we going to see this big A Antichrist? Are you surprised? What do you think? I'm looking forward to the... Uh, by the way, I'm not done. I'm going to show you some more verses here that say Antichrist. Let's go on. Or do you know that there are four places in the Bible? That's it. There's only four places in the Bible that mention the Antichrist. And we're going to look at each one. And two of them are in one chapter. First John chapter 2. We got verses 18 and we got verse 22. And... Uh, in verse 18, he's mentioned, so technically you can say five places, because in one verse it's mentioned twice, but it's also mentioned twice in the same chapter. So it's really, really technically only three places in the Bible. First John 2, First John 4, and uh, Second John, which is only one chapter, but it's verse 7. So we're going to look at these three areas. Verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. There are many Antichrists. So, so there's not just one person called the Antichrist, and it's a little a Antichrist. Every place we're going to look at in the Bible that says Antichrist is a little a. Like it's not a name, but a description of someone and uh, or of multiple people. So verse 22 says this about the Antichrist. He's a liar. It says, who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist, or he is Antichrist. That, uh, notice it says, I, I said it wrong, you know, almost by mistake. Mandela effect, right? He is the Antichrist. It doesn't say that. It says he is Antichrist. That denieth the Father and the Son. The Antichrist is a spirit. It's not a person. Uh, and uh, people had that evil spirit. So if we're going to go to 1 John 4, and let's start with the beginning. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth, confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth that, Je that Jesus Christ is, n I'm sorry, confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. There it is, Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is, is, is it in the world. And then in verse 6, I got the ending there. Hereby know we Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So the Antichrist is a spirit of error, and we have the spirit of truth as Christians. And so the Antichrist is not an individual person, right? And so, but, but look at the ending of verse 3. And even now already is it in the world. That's, it's already in the world is the spirit of Antichrist. But how many people have you heard say that the Antichrist probably lives today? We're in the end times. I believe that. But I don't know about this Antichrist anymore actually being a person. Very interesting. It's confusing a little bit. But clearly the spirit of Antichrist has been in the world. It's been in the world since forever. You know, but the, the, the bottom line is that in the end times, is there going to be an Antichrist individual or is there just a, bu a bunch of spirit of Antichrist, which is a spirit of error? Lies, basically. And in 2 John, uh, like I said, it's only one chapter in, in 2 John and it's verse 7 we're going to look at. Sometimes if you do a study on this, you might see that it says 2 John 7. But it's seven's not a reference to a chapter in that instance. It's a reference to the verse. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. You deny our Lord Jesus Christ, you're an antichrist. That's all that's saying. So what did you think about this? You've just, you just along with me, read every single place in the Bible where it mentions specifically Antichrist. And every time it's talking about a, either a spirit or any number of people that have this characteristic that they deny our Lord Jesus Christ and they're opposed to God. And so they have this evil spirit about them called 
Antichrist. But they're not the capital A Antichrist. And so only in Second Thessalonians do we really have this kind of clearer idea that there's going to be a man in the end times that comes that is this deceiver and does these things. But certainly from Revelation 13, you wouldn't get that picture. You're going to get the picture that the deceiver of the world is the beast of the earth that rises up and is described with characteristics that are beast-like, not human-like. And so I'll leave it up to the comments at this point. Fascinating stuff. As I said, I'm not really declaring any specific thing. If you came here hoping to get some answers from me, hopefully there were some answers that you were able to see in the text of Scripture that we looked at. And the concepts presented here, perhaps, hopefully, were intriguing to you and make you think to do some more studying on your own. Fascinating topic. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Okay, this is Faith on Fire. I'm Brian. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe for more interesting videos that cover controversial issues in Christianity, uh, focusing heavily on what does the Bible tell us. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video. May the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.